Hello everyone, Heinlein here. In this uh, video I will uh, show you how to use air-to-air uh, -air missiles in the MiG-21. Uh, I will focus on air-to-air -air missiles uh, and uh, not usage of the gun as it uh, will require a video on itself. The R3s uh, are obviously older uh, missiles. They saw extensive use in uh, Vietnam and uh, they have a smaller warhead, uh, uh, 13 kilograms if I'm not mistaken. So uh, a bomber, for instance, can actually survive a uh, hit with the R3s, and they are also more unreliable. The R13s uh, were introduced in the 70s and uh, are obviously better than the R3s, and they can be used against uh, bombers and fighters and have a larger warhead. So, at uh, pylon uh, 1 and 5 I have loaded up with uh, R3Rs, those are radar guided, and uh, on the inner pylons uh, 2 and 4 I have loaded up with R60s, uh, newer versions of uh, uh, IR missiles. Before we get into the air I just thought it would be a good idea to uh, show you some of the radar symbology we are going to uh, see today. First we can see the IFF uh, symbology. Uh, if it's an uh, equal sign like this on the radar screen, that means it's uh, friendly. And uh, this one means uh, no response. Or, and we also see this if you have not uh, done an interrogation. I'm going to show you how to do that as well. And once uh, the IFFing is uh, complete, then uh, we're going to uh, see this on the radar screen, like uh, so. Uh, this one means that uh, we are co-altitude, the target is on the same altitude, this one means uh, above or uh, below us. And after we have locked up a target, we are going to see this right here, this is the ranging information. These two ranging indicators right here is going to move inwards as we get closer and closer to the target and once they're inside this one, that means uh, we are in range and we can uh, fire. All the missiles in the MiG-21 have essentially the same range uh, between 3 and uh, 5 kilometers in effective uh, range, so they are uh, essentially like uh, the AIM-9 missiles. The benefit of uh, having a radar guided missiles is that they are uh, often more precise than uh, the uh, uh, IR guided missiles. When it comes to the air-to-air -air radar in the MiG-21, it uses the RP-22 Sapphire uh, radar. This uh, page is from uh, Chuck's Guide. It's uh, highly recommended that you guys uh, read uh, that. I will leave a link uh, in the description. The Sapphire radar uh, can uh, detect targets of up to 30 kilometers. Not very good uh, uh, to modern radars, but uh, quite uh, good uh, for the time. And it uh, scans in an azimuth of uh, 30 degrees from uh, left to right. And it scans up and down uh, 0 0.1.5 degrees and uh, upwards in 17 degrees uh, elevation. And it, and it takes about 3 seconds to make a full scan in uh, the search mode. And the radar in the MiG-21 also automatically stabilizes uh, with the horizon. It, uh, that means uh, if you are climbing then uh, the radar is, will try to follow uh, the horizon line, like so. And uh, they get it as a gimbal limit of uh, 30 degrees. That means you can climb uh, 30 degrees and uh, the radar will still follow the horizon. This is uh, just uh, very basic uh, stuff about the uh, radar. I will make a full video on uh, the radar in a different video, but I thought you wanted to know this before we get airborne. Okay, so now we're in the air and it's currently in uh, active uh, pause. In front of us uh, we have uh, four juicy B-52 targets that we're going to uh, try and shoot with our IR and our radar guided missile. So we're going to start with our radar guided missile, so let's set it up. Let's make sure it's an air to air. This one to uh, SAR, semi-active radar. And uh, select the collect uh, station, three and four. 3 or 4, because uh, my radar guided missiles are on the outer pylons. And uh, this one to LNC, this one to shooting, this one to auto, this one to missile. And, uh, and at this point you are ready. 
I can see that we're picking up a bit of clutter on the radar, so I'm going to set this to side beam compensation mode that is in the middle, like so. And the radar picture is a bit cleaner. So let's uh, on pause. Oh, I can see the B-52s with my naked eye in front of us. Currently they are uh, uh, nudging. So, and the radar is not really good on the in the MiG. Oh, there we picked up uh, two targets on the radar. There should be four of them, three. Hmm, where is the last one? Ah, there he is. Uh, before we go any further, I'm just going to show you a couple of uh, key bindings you need to do. Uh, the first one, you need to uh, bind up your TDC range uh, switch, plus and minus. I have it bind to my HOTAS. And you need to lock, uh, bind your uh, le target lock-on switch, like so. Those are the, the two... Uh, these are the three bindings you need to do in order to operate uh, the radar in air-to-air -air mode. Alright. Okay, let's uh, move the TDC up, like so. And you can also see that it's also working the, the gun sight, gun sight uh, range, like there. And uh, just pause really quick here. In the MiG-21 you can't move the TDC uh, left or right, just up and down, so you need to maneuver your, maneuver your aircraft uh, until the target is inside this little box here. Let's pause again. Right, let's uh, try to lock uh, this one up. Okay, we got a lock on. And you can see the ranging bars are starting to move in slowly. Let's uh, just, uh, okay, just go back to active pause for a quick uh, minute here. Just wanted to show you uh, a few things. It is, uh, if you want to break the radar lock, you can do it in two different ways. You can press the radar interference reset switch, like so. Or you can turn the, you can turn the radar uh, to standby and back on again, like so. Both uh, method works. So let's uh, get uh, him back and lock him up one more time. Lock, like so. There he is. All right, We're coming up into range now. And there, just pause. Now you can see uh, two lights coming came up in the radar scope. This is the launch authorization uh, uh, light. That means we are in range and can fire. And the HR means that the uh, seeker head has found its uh, target. So let's on pause and uh, pop off a uh, round. Fox 1. Seems like it was tracking. Ah, no. There, it hit. And it's going down. Normally, actually, one thing you can experience is that... Uh, let's just uh, put it back into active pause again. Uh, one thing that you can experience is that uh, the R3 uh, does not succeed in destroying a bomber because uh, it only has a 13 kilogram warhead, I believe. So it might not be enough to destroy a bomber, so we might need to shoot uh, two uh, missiles at it to, in order to destroy it. I was actually expecting that, but uh, one missile is cheaper, so 
Okay, let's try to get the next target with uh, an IR missile. So let's uh, unpause and going to switch this one up to IR like so, and this one to station two, I think. definitely found a target and as of now we are about five kilometers behind the next target now I want to get a little bit closer so we don't uh, miss the R3 missiles are expensive allegedly okay let's uh, try and pop off uh, one around Fox 2 Tracking. Let's see. Oh, big turbulence. Seems like it was tracking the wrong target. Yeah, it did. <laughs> that can happen. And in this case, you saw that uh, it did not succeed in destroying uh, the bomber. So let's pop up one more. Let's select station one. And. Fox. Ah, it's tracking. Are you kidding me? Two missiles and it did not destroy the bomber. That's incredible. The B-51 is a very sturdy aircraft. Indeed. So, let's uh, try to pop off our last... Uh, Radar guided missile. Okay, let's try to get this guy. Select station four. him up. There we go. Launch authorization. I want to get a little bit closer. And Fox 1. Missile is tracking. And it hits, but it did not succeed in destroying the bomber, like I said uh, back there. Let's turn on our guns and uh, finish him off. There we go, splash one bomber. So that is it for this video, thank you for watching and I'll uh, see you in the next video.